Right then, I'm, I'm going to have a look at this compound slide today, getting this fixed in position. Um, I've got a couple of methods I could use here, and I'll just quickly run through them. But they've all got limiting factors. In fact, in fact, the old lanes had limiting factors. With it being so small, um, you know, and compact, I've I've uh, hit, I've hit issues all the way through it to get to get it to work how I want it to work anyway so when I got this cross slide it's already had these slots put in it in the casting now if I use them slots how they're positioned at the moment um, this is my 45 degree line if I wanted to get 45 degrees on this compound that's where my fixing bolts would come to and if I take this off now and show you, the slots are nowhere near that. So the slots want extending by a quarter of an inch each way. Well, why can't I do that, I hear you all asking. Uh, it's because they're up to the maximum position at the moment. Because where this cross slide dovetail comes down, it, it's coming that way in. And it's just about where that slot is now. So that's the reason they've stopped there. So no matter what I do, I can only get 30 degrees doing it that way. And then there's another limiting factor. Because the thickness of this is very thin, it's only one eighth. The actual top of this dovetail on the cross slide rides right at the bottom of this, I'll call it the cross slide table. So I would have to counter... I'd have to put a counter slot in to get the head of a bolt to be able to locate to come through and then two nuts on the top. So that's a few limiting factors in that one. So if I want to get me 45 degrees I would have to use this centre bolt here, a centre bolt in the centre of this compound. Now this has got a few limiting factors. Although I can get me 45, in fact I can get more than 45, uh, to access that centre hole I would have to wind this compound back each time, which is not a big job, to get to the nut to clamp it. But then, because this is very thin here, and this is very thin, and it's riding where the screw is, this centre bolt, this centre piece. I'd have to counter bore underneath to get the head of a special screw to come through. So that's, I don't think that's a problem. Uh, and then when it comes through here, I've got the added problem again. Because this screw is coming through the centre of here, it's more or less touching this bottom of this dovetail. And I've not got a lot to play with here, thickness wise. So I would have to counter bore halfway through and make a special nut and a special tool to clamp it each time. So what I'm going to do then, I think I'm going to go this route first using the centre. I know it's not going to have as much clamping power, but then again it's not going to be taking massive cuts, is it? It's a micro lathe, so it's going to be taking micro cuts. Uh, then it, if I find that that's not adequate, I'll have to revert back to the slot method and just uh, have 30 degree movement instead of my 45. So uh, watch this space then and we'll crack on and I'll start making some bits and pieces up to use this centre hole. My first job then is to counterbore this side of the compound for the special nut. Then I'm going to take this um, cross slide off and counterbore the underneath for the head of a special bolt.
Right, I've got them counterboard now. Uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to. This is the cross slide. I'm going to make a. I'm calling it a spindle. Um, with a 532 by 40 thread on it and a 3 8 diameter head to fit in this recess that will um, that will come through and be fastened in with a 10 ba screw on one side just to stop it from spinning really and to hold it in position and when it comes through here then it's going to pick this up And then as it comes through, I can only afford to have a small amount sticking through, just enough to make an, a circular nut, uh, just over a sixteenth in thickness with a 532.40 teeth per inch thread. And then I'll put two holes in. I'll put two holes in, one on each side and make a peg spanner just to be able to clamp it up so that the um, compound slide mating surface can just slide over that nut. Well that's my plan anyway and uh, plans don't always come to fruition do they? But I've got a 532.40 tap and die so uh, We'll give it a try. So I've got this arrangement made, there's my little nut, I've put two uh, peg holes in it, I've fastened the spindle in with a 10 ba screw to the correct length and I've made this little tool with two pegs on. So let's see if it'll fit together then. Well it seems to have got it okay. I think it I think that might be okay for you know the amount of forces that's involved what what I'll be doing on it. 
seems to have got it quite solid so I think I'll call that a success for the time being until I try it Well that's it then, that's another part of Jigsaw completed, uh, I think that should hold it that, but you know I'll not know for sure until I try it will I? And uh, if it don't work I'll just revert back to them uh, slots that I've shown you. So uh, I think that's it for this part, then I'll continue with this in the next video, I don't know where it's going to be yet but you know I've got I've got quite a lot to do on it yet. Uh, one of the jobs I've got to make uh, an adapter an adapter for this chuck to fit onto this nose so maybe it'll be that next I don't know anyway uh, if you found that useful interesting etc give me a thumbs up and a subscribe I'd appreciate that and uh, I'll catch you up next part of this then so thanks for watching bye for now